everybody welcome back to my channel thank you all for tuning in uh tonight i'm going to rank the 15 studio albums from the great american rock and roll band the bad boys from boston that of course being aerosmith um now that they are newly retired i've been listening to a lot of them lately and i wanted to do another video this time ranking the albums but doing it by the numbers as i did with kiss and van halen i rated every song on all 15 studio studio albums from a one to a five Five being my favorite Aerosmith songs, four being great songs, four being good or average songs, three, or that's, I screwed that up, didn't I? Five being my favorite Aerosmith songs, four being uh, great songs, three being good or average, two being don't love it or don't hate it, and one being songs I am not a fan of. And I averaged them out, each album got a rating, and now I'm going to rank them in order from my least favorite to my favorite. Coming in at the bottom with the average of a 2.2. Um, this one does not surprise me at all. That is Music From Another Dimension, released in 2012. The band's 15th and final, I believe, studio album. Um, this album has a lot of twos. <laughs> like, half of the album was just twos to me. A couple of ones as well, like Oh Yeah, and uh, Tell Me, and... Um, love her a lot all got ones no fives there's nothing on here that i feel strongly enough to give a five however out go the lights did get a four um just never got into this one uh and it's long it's 15 tracks i don't think there's i don't honestly don't even think there's a good nine or ten song album in here there's maybe a good ep but uh this is just largely uninspired and forgettable to my ears so music from another dimension uh, pretty sure I was pretty sure it would rank at the bottom. It it definitely is my least favorite. Comes in at a 2.2. All right, coming in at number 14, we're gonna go with Rock in a Hard Place. So this one so far matches my um, actual Aerosmith ranking. Um, my uh, fa my least favorite to favorite ranking that uh, I did a long time ago. Uh, this one averages a 2.6. Um, I think there's some good songs in here. I did give Jailbait a 5. I gave uh, Lightning Strikes and the title track 4. But there's also a lot of ones like Cry Me a River, Joni's Butterfly, and my least favorite Aerosmith song ever, which is Push Comes to Shove. Um, so it does average a little bit higher than music from another dimension. I think probably because A, it's not as long, so you don't have quite as many ones and twos. And uh, Jail Bay does pick it up a little bit here. But uh, this album, to me, always sounded... Uh, I mean, of course, it sounds different. Joe Perry and Brad Whitford are not on this. But uh, Steven Tyler also really sounds like he's hitting rock bottom, which he was. Thankfully, uh, Steven would pick, uh, pick himself up, and the band would get clean in the next couple of years. But they really do sound like they're at rock bottom on this one here. Still a couple of gems, though. Rock in a Hard Place comes in at number 14. Number 13, this one kind of surprising, and I kind of disagree with it because I do definitely like it more than the next couple, but uh, Get a Grip, averaging at 2.6, just like Rock in a Hard Place, but wins the tiebreaker by virtue of having more five-star songs. And I think because the first third of this album, I really, really love intro and eat the rich is one of my favorite aerosmith songs not only of this era of the band or the 90s but the band's entire career i think it's a great song get a grip i love fever living on the edge those first five tracks are phenomenal perfect i mean this is on its way to being a great album what hurts the rating the rating for this album is that i don't really like much past that um crying gotta love it crazy and line up all got ones i don't like any of those songs Crying and Crazy drive me crazy, especially because my dad used to love those songs. They're still some of his favorite Aerosmith songs today, today. but when I was younger, he used to play those ones all the time, and it would drive me up a wall. Um, same with Amazing, but I don't mind Amazing quite as much. I gave Amazing a 2 instead of a 1, because uh, I I can listen to Amazing every now and then, but I'm, I'm never going to seek it out. Um, Flesh, Walk On Down, Shut Up and Dance, they're just sort of there to me. Don't really sway me one way or the other they all got uh, they all got twos i believe 
yeah, I take a lot of twos, you know, because I don't love them, I don't hate them. Boogeyman, don't love it, don't hate it. So, the back two-thirds of this album really let down an incredible start. And that start to this album, single-handedly, makes me like it better than the next two albums. But the next two albums, probably by virtue of having fewer one-star tracks, um, rated a little higher than Get a Grip. So at number 12, we have Nine Lives coming in at a 2.7, so uh, kind of just one point higher. Um, I gave two five stars on this one. That's Full Circle and Hold My Soul, two great songs. Hold My Soul is some of Steven's best singing in uh, his entire career, in my opinion. And Full Circle is just a really underrated Aerosmith gem. Crash I like a lot. I gave that one a four. Otherwise, Pink is the only one-star track on here, but you've just got lots of twos and threes that sort of uh, weigh this one down a bit. So, Nine Lives comes in at number 12. Number 11, rating fairly high. I'm actually kind of surprised that Honkin' on Bobo got 3.0 as an average rating because uh, this one doesn't really intrigue me that much. A couple of five-star songs because I, I do love Roadrunner. I do love uh, Shame, 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 and... Baby Please Don't Go, all three of those are really good covers. There's no ones on here, but a lot of twos and threes, so it's just very average. Um, this one, these songs are performed really, really well, but it's just not what I was looking for in an Aerosmith album at the time. I would have rather had a album of new material, but uh, blues covers, you know, they're good. They're just not really what I... Not really wanna, what I want to pick up an Aerosmith album to hear, I guess. Alright, that brings us to uh, number 10. Pump, from 1989. This one is up to a 3.3. A um, couple of five-star tracks on this one with uh, F-I-N-E and Janie's Got a Gun. Two songs I really, really love. Young Lust and The Other Side and My Girl all getting fours. The only one I gave on here is Monkey on My Back. Um, Pump is a little bit all over the place for me, and I think that shows in the in the rating here, but uh, I gotta say, Steven Tyler at this point in time, I think, is just on fire. Sounds phenomenal. Everything from Permanent Vacation through Nine Lives, I think, is Steven Tyler's peak vocally. So, um, yeah, Pump 3.3 comes in at number 10. Coming in at, at number 9, 3.4 is Night of Ruts. This one felt a little low for me because I really do love Night in the Ruts. But what brings it down are the two cover songs on here that I don't really care for. That being Remember Walking in the Sand, which I only gave a two, and uh, Reefer Headed Woman, which is the album's only one. But aside from those two, you got five star tracks like uh, No Surprise, Shakita, um, and the other cover on here, the one that I really love, Think About It, the uh, Yardbirds cover that nobody ever talks about, but I love that song. Cheesecake, Three Mile Smile, Bone to Bone, really good songs as well. So uh, I think this one's drugged down just a little bit by having those two covers that I never quite got into. But Night in the Ruts comes in at number 9 at a 3.4. Number 8, and we're up to a 3.8, is Permanent Vacation. A um, couple of five-star songs on here. Magic Touch, uh, Ragdoll, Dude Looks Like a Lady, uh, St. John, and Hangman Jury all got fives. No, no ones on this one. The only two that I gave out, the only two twos that I gave out was Dude Looks Like a Lady and the movie. And, um, I mean, Dude Looks Like a Lady, I am burnt out on, but I can't in good conscience give that song a one. Uh, just because it's, it's definitely not on the level of a pink or a crying or a push comes to shove. Uh, in terms of me disliking it that much, it's, it's not quite that low. So, it got a two. The movie... You know, it's just, I, I don't, I don't know, I don't think Aerosmith really ever did instrumentals well, at least on their studio albums, so, uh, Permanent Vacation comes in at a 3.8. We are now at number 7. This one kind of surprised me a little bit, but I really do like this album. It's grown on me a lot since I was younger. Um, that's the debut album, 3.9. Um, when I was younger, I used to actually think this album was kind of boring, or kind of dull. Um, over time, I've grown to really enjoy it. I just played this one last night or the night before, and it this is a solid debut album, in my opinion. My five-star songs are Make It and Dream On. Both are incredible. Dream On, I don't think anything really needs to be 
really needs to be said for Dream On that hasn't been said. It's a great song. Make it. It's a great introduction for the band. Really great introduction for any band. Um, just love the the opening the uh, opening lyrics of Steven Tyler. Good evening, people. Welcome to the show. Got something here. Want you all to know. Um, great way to introduce yourself. Uh, I do like to walk in the dog cover a lot. Mama Ken moving out. The songs that used to do nothing for me, like uh, Somebody and One Way Street and Write Me, um, have all moved up to threes in my opinion. I think they're they're pretty good songs. So Aerosmith's debut album comes in at number seven, averaging at a 3.9. Alright, so my six favorite albums that... I, w I would definitely rank these in my top six. These are definitely the ones I reach for the most. Um, they wind up all finishing in my top six with uh, Aerosmith's debut right right on his tail because also averaging a 3.9 is Draw the Line coming in at number six. But Draw the Line has more five-star songs, which is the tiebreaker. Um, the title track and Kings and Queens and I Want to Know Why are my three five-star songs on here, all of which amongst my favorite Aerosmith songs, of course. Um, I Want to Know Why, I, I really dig that song. I think uh, Draw the Line and Kings and Queens are quite popular songs in the catalog, but I really love I Want to Know Why. Yeah, Critical Mass and uh, Safe for Sore Eyes coming in with fours and all the rest getting threes, so there's no twos and no ones on this album. Uh, this album doesn't quite hold up to Rocks and Toys in the Attic as far as consistent greatness, but uh, this is still another awesome Aerosmith album from uh, their peak era, in my opinion, which was the 1970s. So, Draw the Line comes in at number six. Averaging at a 3.9. Coming in at number 5, averaging a 4.1 is the sophomore effort, Get Your Wings. Um, I've got two 5 stars on this one, that being Same Old Song and Dance and Seasons of Wither. Pandora's Box was the weak point, I gave it 3. So that's still that's a pretty good uh, rating for a, a weak point, in my opinion. Everything else got a 4. Um, I think this album is super, super solid. Um, as much as I've grown to love that debut album, I still think that this one is a step up. And uh, some songs on here that always kind of felt as if they were sort of bordering on prog, like Space and uh, Woman of the World, two songs that almost feel like Aerosmith might take a proggy direction from there on, but they never they never really did after that. Um, of course, the Yardbirds cover that everyone talks about, Train Kept a Rollin', so um, great album. Get Your Wings comes in at number five. Number four, we have the ever-underrated Done With Mirrors. I really love this album. Um, my five-star tracks on here, uh, Let the Music Do the Talking, though I do prefer the Joe Perry Project version, the Aerosmith version, is awesome as well. My Fist, Your Face, Reason the Dog, Gypsy Boots, and The Hop, which is one of my favorite Aerosmith songs of all time. Actually, one that never, ever seems to get talked about. Uh, no ones, no twos. I got uh, Shame on You with four. So, just a solid, solid record right here. Done with Mirrors comes in at number four, averaging at a 4.2. Alright, my, uh, my upset pick of the entire thing, and... My pick for most underrated Aerosmith album, along with Done With Mirrors, but I think this one is even more underrated because it's generally more hated. That is Just Push Play. Yes, Just Push Play is coming in at number three. Um, this one moves up because I believe I rate, ranked it sixth when I ranked these before. But I've been stuck on this album the last couple of days, and I'm perfectly fine moving this up to number three. I really do love this album still to this day. It averages at a... Amazing 4.6 with lots of five-star songs. Um, no twos and no ones. So lots of great songs on here that I think get overlooked from the band. Um, I might even uh, do a uh, full episode on just reviewing this album. But this was the album that got me to Aerosmith, so I may be a little bit biased towards it. But I still think it's a pretty good, pretty overlooked album. Has a lot of my favorite songs still to this day. And... Just Push Play comes in at a 4.6, number 3, just missing out on my top 2, which both average 4.7. These two great albums, Rocks and Toys in the Attic, I imagine most people's favorite Aerosmith albums, um, both 4.7s, 
Um, one of these albums has seven five-star songs. The other has six. The one with six, therefore finishing in second place, is Rocks. The first six songs all have fives. The last three songs all have fours. Just an incredibly solid Aerosmith record. Back in the Saddle, uh, Last Child, you know, great songs that pretty much anybody would know. But you got some deeper cuts on here, like Rats in the Cellar, Combination, Sick as a Dog and Nobody's Fault. So, so good. Um, some of the Aerosmith's heaviest stuff on here, too, like Combination and Nobody's Fault. Killer stuff, Rocks, comes in at number two. That leaves Toys in the Attic to come in at number one, averaging at a 4.7. Um, but by virtue of having one more five-star track, it takes the cake. And Toys in the Attic definitely is my favorite Aerosmith album. Toys in the Attic, Uncle Salty, Adam's Apple, uh, Big Ten Inch Record, Sweet Emotion, No More, No More, and Round and Round, all five-star songs. Walk This Way, four stars. I, I gotta knock a little bit off just because I am pretty well burnt out on that song, but it's still a great song. And uh, You See Me Crying, I give it three, but, you know, 15, 20 years ago, I would have given it a one because I used to not like it at all. But I've grown to really love and appreciate You See Me Crying, so that one's uh, jumped up a bit for me. So, Toys in the Attic, still my favorite Aerosmith album, and comes in at the top of the list. So, if you like this kind of content, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, in the comments below, rank your favorite Aerosmith albums. If you, if you like this kind of content, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, all that good stuff, and I'll see you next time.